Ladies and gents, let's have a look at the Shadow Priest. Many people waiting for this one. Obviously the main DPS, and in fact the only DPS spec for the Priest. And of course it went through horrible, horrible rumorings from Blizzard about how it was going to be balanced around the fact that its AoE was very strong and all these kind of worries that came in in just previous to the Walls of Draenor alpha release. And then what we saw was level 100 talents people found rather confusing and whether or not they were actually going to be able to work. So a little bit in depth on this one because everything's not as cut and dry as we'd probably like it to be. It's a confusing one because this one seems like a balancing nightmare. A real balancing nightmare. And they, Blizzard don't seem to have done themselves any favours with the level 100 talents. And that potentially will cause you great issue further on in the expansion. And I think it's something you always need to consider when you choose a class. Is whether or not you're going to be consistent over an expansion. Or whether or not you're likely to fall under either the nerf bat or the buff bat. And have power changed all the time. Do things suddenly fall out of favour and come back in. Does Blizzard not like something? Will you have moments of glory and then moments of weakness? And then relying on when those changes will occur. I think it's always very important to bear that in mind. At the basis of it, the Shadow Priest play is pretty much exactly the same. You still got your Mind Blast developing your Shadow Orbs. We did get the wonderful and absolutely astounding addition of five shadow orb slots and uh, your shadow orb consumers still use three which means you can prepare for exceptional burst it's a little bit sad that blizzard did introduce the glyph that allowed us to generate three uh shadow orbs on the pull it was always an issue for the shadow priest to have those three shadow orbs on the pull using all kinds of things like summoning various pets or whatever in order to try and generate those shadow orbs so they brought in a glyph and then they gimped the glyph into oblivion so now it's just not going to work it's a little bit sad because let me just read this one for you the first time you damage an enemy with mind blast you gain two additional orbs meaning three in total, but the cooldown on Mind Blast is increased by six seconds, which is obviously garbage in a raid environment. Great for leveling, though. Got to point that out. Really cool for leveling while you're switching targets. I really, uh, I can see the benefit of it there, so you can just be spamming your Devouring Plague if that's the way you decide to go while leveling. So it's got its use, but in a raid environment, unfortunately, no. Still down to gimmicks in order to generate those three Shadow Worlds, which is a little bit shit. A little bit shit. So, let's talk about these level 100 talents and the p potential problems they're going to cause. Because I think this is what will dictate how the Shadow Priest fares over the course of Wall as a Draenor. And it's something you really need to be thinking about if you roll with the Shadow Priest. With the current Sims... I mentioned this in the Windwalker video. With the current Sims, Shadow Priests are kind of if if not great. But real-world scenario of Warlords of Draenor is that nothing is particularly single target. Sims are mainly built around uh, a block of health that you can just DPS and stand still. That is not how Warlords of Draenor works at all. In any way, shape, or form. There is, like, no bosses that are like that at all. And therefore, those... Sims are relatively useless because quite clearly the Shadow Priest and its abilities are balanced around the fact that you will be DPSing more than one target pretty much a lot of the time. They're balanced around that. They're not particularly balanced around you attacking one thing and standing still because that rarely ever happens. The damage that they put out is really balanced around DPSing multiple two, three targets that will last quite a long time. And therefore, that's where most of your damage comes from. So again, I always put out the feelers because this was the same with the Windwalker. Single target, I mean, kind of iffy. But of course, actual results they're pulling in raids are really high because they're actually balanced around doing more than one thing. So please bear that in mind while you're looking, uh, if you're very much into your math, that that is, real world scenarios are playing out very differently. Very, very differently. So something to bear in mind. A level 100 talents, the clarity of power, the dotless spec, I put in inverted commas, we'll talk about that shortly. Void entropy, an extra dot, cost you three shadow orbs and lasts over a minute. Uh, very, very cool. Devouring Plague actually refreshes it to its full one minute duration, which means it's kind of fire and forget on a boss. And Auspicious Spirits, where your shadowy apparitions now grant you one shadow orb instead of dealing damage. Uh, the footage in the background is going to be a little bit odd for this one. There's currently a huge bug on the beta where bosses use certain abilities that disconnects you from the game. Uh, which means getting a consistent boss fight in is nigh on impossible at the moment. It's a little bit of a sad bug because the predict you can actually you know which ability is going to do it. Such as Netharyak's Inhale is about to screw you over and you're going to disconnect and log in as fast as possible. So I'll do the best I can, but there will be some trash footage in there. Balancing Nightmare. 
Balancing nightmare. Why do this to yourself, Blizz? Why? Why p create a situation where something is either garbage or c incredibly powerful and is going to need changes in the future? And this is why Shadow Priests are getting a little bit pissed off at the moment because their abilities, their level 100 spells are actually really good. Some people will dislike one of them or a couple of them, but they do give you completely separate, separate play styles and I think that's exactly what it should do. It's not as if Priests have a different choice of DPS spec. It's all down to the talents. And the talents really dictate how you play the class. And that's a good thing. I like that. Let's talk about Auspicious Spirits. Because this seems to be the biggest offender. Auspicious Spirits, where your Shadow Orbs actually... Uh, your Shadowy Apparitions generate Shadow Orbs. Based on crit, obviously. Shadowy Apparitions come from Critical Strike of your Shadow Orb Pain. So that ties in there. Means that you'll have an entire separate set of gear... Very crit focused in order to generate more shadowy apparitions, in order to generate more shadow orbs, and then you'll be firing off a lot of devouring plagues. So that makes sense. You're going to need a set of gear, and that is the play style that comes with that. Obviously, the more targets, the more powerful this becomes. Now, therein lies the problem, doesn't it? There will be a point where this becomes far too powerful. You can see already in your mind, if you can just have a reasonable crit rate of probably around 30%, which we can already achieve, I might add, in first tier of gear that is currently available in Wallace of Drain, or you can already get that, you have a hugely consistent income of Shadow Orbs and are firing off Devouring Plagues all over the damn place. And if you have up to five targets, your DPS starts to skyrocket. It's worth mentioning here that actually, considering that Blizzard was like, well, Shadow Priest AoE is so good and so easy to do that we're going to reduce their single target, is that Shadow Priest AoE currently is really bad. So there's a slight irony in there. But Shadow Auspicious Spirits clearly is weaker with less targets and then becomes more and more powerful with more targets and certainly becomes far more powerful with more gear to the point where it's clearly going to have issues in the future. Now, I like Auspicious Spirits. I like the fact that I have to keep a closer eye on my Shadow Orbs. I have to plan whether or not I'm going to Mind Blast here. Do I Mind Blast on four Orbs, three Orbs? How powerful is my gear? How consistent am I getting Shadow Orbs? I like it. I like the gameplay style. But I can obviously see that the more targets I have to play with, and of course the ability to cheese which nobody really likes as much as some people like to DPS. Or obviously, if you've got things that don't need DPSing, you're still going to be sticking your Shadow Orb Pain all over them just to generate extra Shadow Orbs. And more than likely, that is a single target DPS increase. But it's a playstyle most people don't really want built into their class. This is going to create issues. So whether or not that's going to be nerfed in some way, rebalanced, is it going to cause huge problems in about Raid 2? I would imagine it's going to cause problems around the second Raid tier. It's ropey. Ropey as all hell. On to Void Entropy, this is the extra dot. Lasts a minute and is refreshed by Devouring Plague. So once you stick it up on a boss, obviously within one minute you're going to generate another Devouring Plague. And ergo, it never ever runs out. It's very boring. It's got to say, does it do its job? Yes, absolutely. Is it boring as balls? Yes, absolutely. It's completely fucking boring. And, and therefore, I'm always like, well, you know, it, it does feel a little bit like you just couldn't be asked. Uh, in all honesty, it just feels like you couldn't be asked when you put this thing up and you just gave an extra dot. But that's the initial impression of it. In reality, what this is, is saying you can play your Shadow Priest as you like to play it now. This is kind of like the, we're giving you something extra, but if you use Void Entropy, you basically play your Shadow Priest exactly as you do in Mists of Pandaria. So if that's the playstyle you like, there it is. And you still have a little bit extra on top of there. But it's something minor. You can forget about it once it's done. Because it's going to automatically refresh. And there's the Shadow Priest as you know and love it. So it's very easy to look at Void Entropy compared to the other two. And say that seems a little bit boring. But then you think ah. Okay this is the talent I can take. In order to play my Shadow Priest in it's classic style. So if you really like the classic style of Shadow Priest like I do. Void Entropy actually suits that role rather well. In comparison to the more procky style of Auspicious Spirits. And then of course the Dotless style of Clarity of Power. So let's talk about Clarity of Power. The Dotless spec. People didn't ask for it. Some people really like it. Surprised to see after doing all my research. That there's quite a few people who actually really like Clarity of Power. Who knew? I don't. Uh, I don't like it. And then of course through Clever Mechanics came in the idea of Dot Weaving. Now Dot Weaving is being bigged up very much. I would actually say this is the new fucking Master Frost in all honesty. People bigging it up like uh, this is going to be the true sign of skill. Dot weaving, if you don't know what it is and you're reading it on forums and you're like, what the hell is dot weaving? Dot weaving is essentially making sure that you get up to five shadow orbs, you take mind flay insanity, and when that happens, you put your dots up and you spam devouring plague with mind, mind flay insanity and still use your mind blast and get a nice long channel of mind flay insanity out of it. 
End of story. Obviously, Clarity of Power is, is supposed to work by giving you Mind Spike as a filler and not use dots except for Devouring Plague and Mind Blast. That's it. So you go Mind Blast, Mind Spike, Mind Spike, Mind Blast, Mind Spike, Mind Spike, Mind Blast, Devouring Plague, and then you use your then you use your Mind Flay, obviously, because your Mind Spike would remove your Devouring Plague otherwise, which is just goofy sauce. Don't want to be doing that. So that's how it's designed to work. But obviously, people have worked out this spec, this thing called Dot Weaving, this mysterious thing, whereas you can build up to five Shadow Orbs, which means you can easily chain back-to-back -back two Devouring Plagues and get a nice, big, fat Mind Flay Insanity out while keeping Dots up, and then you can go back to the Ordinary Rotation while you build up your Shadow Orbs again. Simple as that, but it's an interesting spec. If they know, now the, the risk there, you've got to bear in mind, is that Blizzard might say, we don't want you doing that. That's not the purpose of Clarity of Power. I personally think they'll leave it alone. I personally think they'll leave it alone, especially as most players seem to be happy with the skill factor involved with doing that. I don't see it personally, but if people want to consider it the skill cap, go ahead. I don't mind. It's Is it more skilled than the ordinary stuff? Sure. Sure it is. There's no doubt about that. It's objectively more interesting something uh, to do. But Blizzard haven't intended it to work that way, at least not in my opinion. So it's possible that will get nerfed in some fashion. Perhaps they will incorporate something that actually reduces the damage so you need to go back to the ordinary style of doing things. I don't know. I don't know. But Clarity of Power exists as this dotless sort of weaving as it stands right now, style of play, which people will be very into. So the level 100 talents, I think, are actually very cool. They are at risk of becoming redundant. As more gear comes on, Auspicious Spirits is likely to become very powerful. Same maybe with Void Entropy, and therefore Clarity of Power might fall back down. Again, though, Clarity of Power takes very much huge advantages from Mastery, and therefore that could cause problems in the future. I think these talents are a little bit risky, and might cause you to go through troughs and peaks with your class over the course of the expansion. And that's something you need to consider if you don't like that. One of the biggest reasons, and this is why I bring it up, one of the biggest reasons given by players for quitting the game in Mists of Pandaria was that their class was being changed too much. And these talents indicate to me that the Shadow Priest is likely, highly likely, to have rebalancing going on all the way through. Similar to how the Fire Mage was in Mr. Pandaria. And if that bothers you, it's something to consider. I can't guarantee that's going to happen, but just reading how these work, it's a big potential. All right, guys, there's your Shadow Priest. Plays fine. Plays fine. And you'll do okay with it. Have a great day. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.